your brother's keeper? Well, the story of Cain and Abel is a familiar one in the Bible. We know the story of Adam and Eve's two children, two sons, and how the one was evil and the other was good, and how the evil one killed the good one. It's recorded in Genesis 4.8. It says, And Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? Now, what brought all of this on? Well, God had told Adam and Eve of, of the story of blood, I'm sure, and, and the covering, the redemption of blood. And that symbolized in the coats of skins that they were given to wear instead of their fig leaves. And the whole animal sacrifice thing was obviously passed on to the children of Adam and Eve. And so here's Cain and Abel, and they understand that blood has to be shed. But Cain has a better idea. Now, Abel, he does it right. He brings a lamb. And you say, well, how did Abel know enough to bring a lamb? Well, God had taught him, and Abel had embraced that. And as a result, I believe he had gotten saved. And Hebrews 4.11 in the New Testament says, By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. In other words, saved. And so he had it down pat, but Cain didn't. Cain said, I've got these nice vegetables, this nice fruit, and I'll just improvise, and uh, I'll just burn this up to God. But God wanted blood, and God still wants blood. In fact, good works won't get you right with God. Living a good life won't get you to heaven. Being a good citizen won't do it. It's got to take blood. In fact, 1 Peter 1.18 says, Ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ. That's always been God's way. And Abel believed God. Cain didn't. Now, how do we know that God accepted Abel's and rejected Cain? Well, we find here that God gave the thumbs down in some way to Cain's, and, and, and as a result, Cain knew that he had been rejected, and his improvising didn't cut it. And so the first murder ensues. And it's followed by God interrogating Cain and saying, where is your brother? And Cain lies. He said, I don't know. That was a lie. He knew exactly where he'd buried him. But you know, judges and prosecuting attorneys will tell you that murder and lying go hand in hand. In fact, we read these words from Jesus in John 8, 44, to the religious crowd that he was rebuking. He said, "Year of your father, the devil, and the lusts of your father, ye will do. Notice, he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. So murder and lying go hand in hand. But that brings us to our title, Am I My Brother's Keeper? God asked Cain, where is your brother? And Cain said, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? Are we? As we talk about this subject today, we see, first of all, what I call the personal accountability or the, the personal responsibility. When it comes to salvation, you know, it's my responsibility to get saved. And I can't get saved for anyone else. I cannot get saved for my children. If I could, I would vicariously. If I could get saved for my grandchildren, I would. But I can't. We are all responsible for ourselves. Revelation 20 and verse 13 says, And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man, notice, according to their works. According to their works. And so you're not going to be judged for somebody else's works or vice versa, and you can't get saved for somebody else. You know, I can't get saved for my wife. Fact is, according to Jesus, we're not really even going to be married in heaven. And my children, I can't get saved for them. In fact, in heaven, I'm going to be equal with my children. So every person on earth is personally accountable for themselves. And you still have to answer to God for yourself. You know, there's a religion that gets baptized for others. And even dead people, they go back and they look up names of dead people and they get baptized for them in order to get them into heaven. There's no such thing in the Bible. No, you've got to get saved by yourself. You know, at age 20, I was born again. 
Now, I knew it would be a disappointment to my, my loved ones. I love my parents, but I had to get saved because, well, I needed to do it to get right with God, basically. But I laid low for a while. In fact, I wasn't quite 21 years of age, and that was kind of the legal age in, in our lives. And so I waited a couple months, and finally I, I turned 21. I told him shortly afterwards, as much as I love my parents, I had to follow God. Now, they followed Christ and got saved in time and later. But, you know, I've known people, and, and they've said, well, if my, if my parents aren't saved or weren't saved, or if my wife's not going to get saved, I'm not going to get saved, or if my boyfriend's not going to get saved, I'm not going to get saved. You know something? I wouldn't go to hell for anyone. Uh, your mother might have been a good lady, but that won't get you saved. Your dad might even be a preacher. That won't get you saved. Grandpa might have been an evangelist, but you still need to get saved. Somebody says, well, I would get saved, but there's just too many hypocrites for Christians. I know a lot of people using that for an excuse, and they're just as big of a hypocrite. You know, if someone goes to hell, it's their own fault. So you're still accountable for yourself. And nobody can do anything to get you saved. Romans 14, 12 says, So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. And some people have been excusing themselves in that way, well, because of sin. But we see, first of all, the personal accountability. Now, secondly, however, we see the partnered assistance. Now we're talking about Christians and our responsibility. And yes, we are our brother's keeper. We are brother's keeper. Well, we're out of time, but we'll pick up with this next time. And, and God bless you, friend.